Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we're getting back into the inside of the Al Ferrari. Okay guys, well those of you who uh, have been following along, hopefully you're enjoying what you're seeing and uh, if you are, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already because uh, that will really help us get to that 100,000 mark, we're so close. Getting on to what we did last week. So last week I did the uh, internal structure of the bonnet. Uh, I, there was a fair bit of uh, comments backwards and forwards. Some of the people were saying, why don't I do a carbon fiber bonnet? To make a, uh, the bonnet out of carbon fiber is possible. Uh, yes, I've had a lot of experience with fiberglass in the past and um, it's not a huge drama to do it, um, but it's a whole lot of work because basically I'd have to do this make a mold from this. Making a mold is not uh, a quick, simple process. It requires quite a lot of uh, fiberglass and, um, and time and effort to make it well. And then you've got to make a mold of the structure underneath as well. And then you need to um, actually make the part out of the mold uh, in carbon fiber. So you're talking, talking much, much, much more, more work. Um, for something that, um, unless it's perfect, you can have big problems making it fit. Such as, um, I've seen some commercially available carbon fiber products for these cars uh, so far, and yes, they're very expensive, and I know of people who've had a lot of problems fitting them. So, because you can't, at least with, with the bond, I can tweak it, I can twist it, I can, I can shape it and make it fit perfectly, whereas carbon fiber, what you get is what's there, and if it doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. And in any case, I'm not too concerned about weight on this car anyway. Uh, carbon fiber would be fine if I'm really chasing down the uh, every extra kilo, but I have the balance of things on this car that I have so much power that the power to weight ratio is gonna be off the charts anyway on this car, um, that uh, the extra little bit of weight is, is negligible that the bonnet has. People were concerned this bonnet's quite heavy. It might look like it's a lot bulkier, but it's actually got similar, or, or I said less metal in it as it is than the original. So this is currently lighter than the original anyway. Oh, another thing that kept coming up is uh, a lot of people talking about the heat shrinking and uh, that uh, they like to heat it up and use a wet rag on it. I'm not a fan of wet, uh, wet cloths putting water basically on bare metal. Yes, you can do it. Yes, lots of people have been doing it for years. I don't like it personally. I don't like the fact that uh, you can get start getting rust spots in the pits of the uh, the welds and things like that. Just, I don't like it. It's uh, air does just as good a job. Water is not necessary. Uh, air does a fine job. So anyway, uh, I'm happy enough with the bonnet to leave it for now and let's move on to the inside and see what we're going to do in there. All right. So another thing I want to look at in the inside of the car is actually how to get the heater system working. As I said, this is going to be a street car. So I want it to actually work. At this stage, I'm probably not gonna put air conditioning in, just it's, it's too hard to put a compressor in. Um, putting an electric one in, the alternator is not huge in this car either. Or just, just don't have a lot of space to run that sort of stuff. I'm happy enough to just uh, go with heating only in this car at the moment, but uh, which is a requirement for the road. You can't have a car without a uh, demister. So that is uh, something I wanna fit in and this is the factory alpha heater box. So um, the heat heat core is uh, sort of through the center here. And then there's the fan on the bottom that blows the air through and, uh, and sort of directs it where it needs to go. Now, this is all nicely built and molded in so that it fits up under the dash and uh, it's already secured. So I wanna keep this top part of the unit because why remake it if I don't have to? It all works quite well. But um, at the moment, the issue I have is that the fan unit, which is right on the bottom down here, interferes with um, my new tunnel that I've got. So what I wanna do is I wanna see if I can change things up and um, yeah, we'll see if we can come up with another method that works just as well or better. Okay, so I spent a while now trying to wrap my head around how this uh, heater core actually works. I pulled it apart to, uh, to get a concept of what's actually happening. And basically, if I pull this apart, originally, here's the fan. The fan mounts into the base of this here. And basically, the fan, this is in the bottom of the unit. It sucks the air from the plenum chamber, which is in front of the windscreen, those slots behind, uh, in front of the windscreen where the, uh, the wiper motors are. That 
uh, plenum chamber actually serves as a function and that's uh, um, lets you get fresh air into the car but also uh, because of the way it's sort of set up it doesn't let the water in, the water goes down and out and uh, the uh, air can get into the car nice and cleanly. It's sucked through the heater core and uh, by, by this fan and then distributed out the sides to wherever you need it. So um, basically it's got these, these um, flapping valves here and these adjust whether you get uh, air at your feet or air at the dash or a combination of both. Now, I was trying to have a look and see where the ducting was. Because I bought this car in pieces, I haven't pulled it apart. I didn't really know how it worked. After doing a lot more research, I'll show you the dash. This is the factory dash of the car. So uh, instruments panel is obviously here. Um, these two vents at the top here, that is what actually goes up to the windscreen uh, via these these uh, vents that are sit in here and by these just depending on the way they're, they're they're oriented they'll blow the air out the windscreen and give you the your demisting uh stuff i was trying to work out how these side vents were connected and uh it turns out that these side vents on this car um are actually only vents they only go directly into that plenum chamber in the front and just give you fresh air. They are not connected to the heater at all. So uh, there's no heat that comes through here. The heat only goes through the dash vents and and also it comes out the bottom here and this is what's sort of directed at your feet. So the heater core sits something like this and then you've got these ducts that sort of clip in either side and these are connected up to those ports that go up and onto the windscreen. So basically we've got feet and windscreen out of this. So the issue I have with this whole unit is that this, uh, where the motor actually sits in of this fan right in the bottom of the unit is actually interfering with my new tunnel because the tunnel is obviously a bit higher, the gearbox is a bit bigger than the old gearbox so it takes up more space and I don't have room to put this in there anymore. Now, um, talking to you guys, uh, I asked some suggestions uh, a couple of months ago about what I could do about changing the fan. There are uh, complete replacement heater kits for hot rods and stuff that look like they're quite a good quite a good unit I like the fact that this already bolts in right up tucks up right up high under the dash uh, the heater core is an alpha unit that's already replaceable it all fits the car that I don't have to remake anything and make it to, or at least the top half of it to make it fit so if I can use as much of this as possible that would be good when I was asking about fan suggestions, some of you suggested uh, PC fans and things like that, which um, they're possibly a little bit underpowered. Um, the best suggestion I uh, saw was actually about these things. And this is actually uh, a 12 volt fan, uh, marine bilge pump fan. I think it's perfect for what I'm looking for. And this is a three inch version, um, relatively cheap and accessible on eBay. So I thought this was a great option to replace this fan, which I'm sure works fine, but uh, it doesn't fit. So after ordering this, I, uh, I got this in and I didn't really realize how this worked, but basically because the fan sits in the bottom, it's a sealed unit. I was thinking I would have been able to sort of um, blow air into this or something and keep using these side ducts. So maybe I could just cut the bottom of this off and keep using the rest of the system. I don't see an easy way to do that. This is basically because the fan sucks and blows inside this area, unless I could fit this whole fan into the uh, inside of this housing, I don't really see it working and I don't see an easy way for that to work efficiently. What I have come up with is, I can build a flat base for this heater box, block off one of the sides of uh, the heater box and connect this duct to my fan, so this fan will then suck the air through here and then from the outlet of this, I can then distribute uh, the warm air through to the dash, through to the floor, wherever. So that is my plan, is to make a block off plate for the bottom of here and then uh, somehow adapt my heater to another fan and see if that will do the job.
Okay, so a bit of playing around and I've got myself a cover for the, uh, the base of this box. Now, obviously there's no inlet at the moment, but I'm gonna make this up first. I've decided I'm gonna make this out of aluminium. I think that's gonna be the best uh, material to, to use. Hopefully, with this notch, uh, getting rid of this, it, uh, it now fits in the car and gets around the tunnel. So uh, let's start making this out of aluminium. That fits fantastic straight away. So um, basically uh, you can see here, I've got my sort of shape cut out. You can see how close it is all the way along that top edge. Um, the flaps come down and cover over either end nicely there. They're all nice and covered. And um, I did have to put a little bit of uh, rubber seal on this flap. This flap was just a little short, but that, uh, that rubber edge um, has uh, sealed it up nicely. So now I'm just gonna drill my hole so I can bolt it in and we are part way there. Well, that turned out pretty good. So there is my adapter. So uh, yeah, I just cut uh, an end. You saw I just uh, folded up this curved piece out of a template I made. Uh, just did that sort of by hand in the bender and then just sort of my dodgy aluminum welding to weld it all together. And we actually have a cover that completely covers up and I should be able to bolt it up and attach to my intake. So I should be able to just use a, uh, a rubber joiner there and uh, join it up and then we need to work out some ducting. All right, so I've got it all bolted up now. That is uh, the base plate on there. It's a nice solid fit. I am really happy with how that's, uh, that's come together. Um, it, uh, it fits in the engine bay, which is nice and the tunnel still fits in with it, which is, which is even better. And with a Raceworks rubber connector, I can connect up my uh, fan to my inlet and it's it's all there that's that's the initial part is all the way it's supposed to be now the uh, the more difficult part is actually trying to get the this actually to duct into the car and uh, as much as I'm not a fan of doing this I did actually go down to my local hardware store and bought a bunch of plumbing because it's lightweight plastic and the ducts I can get ducks to go in the direction that I want them to go. Um, it just makes a lot of sense. So basically what's going to uh, happen, I've sort of had a look and I've, I can set up this sort, of, uh, this sort of contraption. So basically what it'll do, if you imagine this sits in the center of the car, the uh, interior is this way. So this sits up behind the glove box and I needed to do a, uh, a quick 180 degree bend come around the glove box and then this can run along. I've got two outlets going up to the dash vents and then I've got one going down to the feet of the drivers and one going down to the feet at the passengers. Now, the angle of these might need to change and my theory is, is that um, I'm not gonna be able to switch off the feet, switch from feet to, um, to demister. It's just gonna be running both all the time. So. It's not a big, it's, it's, uh, to me, I don't think it's a really big of an issue. Um, what I can do is I can adjust the 
the outlets by blocking these off so that I can get an even flow through all of the outlets. And I'm gonna give that a go now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect up my fan and just actually see how much each of these exits blow and then I can just tape off portions of the exits to get them to blow sort of semi-evenly or roughly how I want them to, to work. So let's uh, connect it up and see how it goes. So I've connected up my 12 volt system and there we go. We have air coming out of the ends of these, actually. Okay, so the fan is running at the moment with my jump start box. It's running flat out and there's actually quite a bit of uh, airflow coming through these vents. And as you can see, I've sort of progressively blocked them off. So these two will be the floor vents, these two will be the dash vents. And by blocking them off like that, I've basically got them so they're all quite similar in their, um, in their out, output flow. And it's very crude, but this is probably how I'm going to um, set it up in the car. Something along these lines with some, some better duct tape, of course, but uh, basically that's what duct tape was for, is for ducting. And, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. So um, this principle works. Um, I'm actually quite happy. It's actually sucking the air through the, um, through the radiator core. I now have a heater system that's going to work in the car, that's going to fit in the car. Um, let's just do the, uh, the final measuring and make sure that this part actually fits under the dash. Let's bolt it all in and see if we can get it to work exactly the way I want it to. All right, well that's, I've just very quickly chucked a dodgy piece of tape in there. Um, it's tucked in up underneath the, uh, the factory glove box. It actually fits in behind the factory glove box. It doesn't have to modify it at all, which is great. One less thing to modify is, is another day or two of work that I don't have to do, which is fantastic. Um, it will obviously get painted and, uh, and it will be tucked up under and hidden and there'll be the center console in here and stuff. So you, you, you won't notice it, but um, I actually have ducting for my heater that's all going to work as it should. The only thing, the only compromise I've really had to make is that now I can no longer switch between um, feet and dash. It's just gonna be one constant, but I'm happy enough with that compromise. Uh, the rest still works, which is fantastic. And again, that is all the time I have this week. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hi guys, Alfa Romeo's return to Formula One was not proving very successful with the 177 and the 179, so they brought an experienced car designer, Gérard Duca Rouge, to design a new car from scratch. The 182 was a carbon fiber tub with large ground effect tunnels underneath. With the batting of sliding skirt, it had a very tight suspension in order to maintain a good seal on the road. The car still ran the fabulous sounding 3 liter V12 that revved to 12,000 RPM but it was no match for the new turbo engines that were coming into vogue. Although Andrea de Cesare scored a surprise pole on the car's second outing, it was no match for the new turbos coming through and the car's terrible reliability meant that 1982 was a very poor year for Alfa Romeo. With the best result of a third place, the 182 finished less than half of the races that entered that year. All right, that was uh, quite a successful week, actually. I was quite happy with how I managed to get that heater working. So we now will have heat in the car, which is fantastic. It's going to actually work. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go, and I'm, yeah, I'm quite happy with the results. So. Super important, because we don't need it at the moment, but winter is coming. We will, winter yes. Is coming. Winter is coming. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you'd like to see the videos a day early, you can join us on Patreon, and you'll get to see them every... Yes. And uh, yeah, and for hints and tips of what I'm doing along the way, make sure you follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Things hit there first. All right, um, that was another good one. So uh, we'll see you next week. See you hey guys. guys. Carbon fiber tub with large effect ground tunnels underneath. Ground effect tunnels. With the banning of sliding skirts, it had a stiff seal. 
<laughs> also, Andrea de Cesare. Also, Andrea de Cesare. De Cesare. 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 Also, Andrea de Cesare. <laughs> second pole on the car's second outing. It's not right. De Cesare scores us. Blah, blah. Also, Andrea de. Cesare. Do you want me to explain what it is so you understand what you're talking about? No.